So, thank you very much that so many people, ladies and gentlemen, like to listen to our talk about automobile as massive data gathering source and the consequences for individual and privacy. We, this are Rüdiger Hannig and Jimmy Schulz, the president of LOAD, um, the, uh, an association for uh, um, net politics. Yeah, well, how often do you sign um, privacy terms on the internet? If you sign up to a new service, buy something on the internet, you always have to uh, um, accept privacy terms. But did you ever do that driving a car, renting a car, using car sharing uh, models? I've never heard of that, but um, always there is a lot of data gathered in a car. The CEO of VW, Mr. Wintercorn, said, your car's data are mine. So what the hell is your car's uh, data? What he is uh, talking about and who controls the data uh, of whom he is saying, this data is mine. Um, we, this was the starting point for us to think a little bit more about this issue. And we will show you a few slides today where we want to have a, a short look into the control systems and interfaces of your car, where we will present you some stakeholders around the car. Then do we have, again, a data retention issue? And last but not least, is there any help or it's, um, um, yeah, is there any help? <laughs> okay, first of all, your car does have a data interface. Most of the modern cars built after 2000 do have an OBD2 interface where you can read uh, data collected by your car. Um, the technical units and standards are the ECU engine control unit, the OBD2 onboard diagnostic standard 2, the CAN bus controlled area network, and for example, onboard navigation. All data being measurable by sensors and actuators. Um, in granularity, length and structure, uh, for example, thresholds depending on the size of the memory of the car. Simple data, for example, the speed, fuel level, GPS coordinates, acceleration, and uh, RPM, the rounds per minute of the motor, of the engine. The detected data could be, for example, fuel consumption, the average pace, and, for example, if you have connected it to a uh, navigational system, speeding, because the navigation system knows where you are, knows if you are within a city limit, and you drive more than, for example, in Germany, 50 kilometers an hour, of course, you are speeding in most, on most of the uh, uh, roads. Other data, which is uh, can be collected in a car, for example, cell information, if you have e-call, the system which will be implemented in the next couple of years in uh, new cars, dash cams, parking cams, and others, and there's no ownership on the data. Who owns that data? And there might be ownership by database structures, but it's not regulated who owns the data yet. There might be attacks on that data. For example, um, you can connect the OBD2 interface by cable connection. For example, uh, your garage will do so, um, the automobile association will do so if they help you. We will connect via cable to your uh, interface to the car and read out the car information and data. You also, you can do that only if you have physical access to the interior of the car. But there are other interfaces which can be connected to the OBD2 interface, which uh, are uh, wireless, for example, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, and which can be easily accessed by everyone being in the surrounding of your car. I do have, a, for example, an OBD2 interface in my car, which is not encrypted because it doesn't offer any encryption. So uh, everyone within the range of a couple of meters of my car can read the complete data of my car, which is easy to hack, of course. So let us have a look 
to the stakeholders of your cars, and this is an incomplete example, and this example is even not complete because we have no trucks in it, we have no farming machines, all these systems are gathering data and sending data about you. Let's take the first example we have who's the, uh, of ownership and driver. When you are in a family and you are one person, or you are one person, then it might be easy, you are the owner of a car, or you might be the owner of the car, and you might be the driver of the car. And then you have the full control. But even if you give your car to your partner, who's driving with the car, who has to get the information about the last um, ride? Uh, done by the car. So, um, there could be some discrepancies. Could be interesting. Okay, if you have a smartphone, we know you, we can also find where you were and where you are. But even with the car, this is possible now. The next interest is here. Okay. <laughs> The next stakeholder who is interested in the car is the leasing company. Um, most company cars are leased and, mo and a lot of private cars are leased. If you are driving to a car dealer with your private car and you want to buy a new car, to lease a new car, and you prefer a full service leasing, and you are coming up, uh, coming to the dealer with loud machine, loud engine, that's the way then you might know the price you have to pay for the leasing rate will increase because the way how you drive has a deep impact about the costs for the cars and the costs of the maintenance and so on. Therefore, uh, the lease company is very interested in how you are driving the car. The next stakeholder could be a governmental stakeholder. Could be a governmental stakeholder. For example, if you use your private car for some business trips and you want to get some kickbacks back, so you have to plot and to write down in a small booklet uh, where you were, and, uh, how long you stay there, what, uh, and what are the kilometers, and so on. This could also be done uh, uh, by the car, and the tax office is interested in. And especially it's interested in that it's done automatically. So, next one. Um, uh, it's a German speciality that some parts of the wages are paid by a business car, which you can use. Uh, for, for, uh, for private reasons also. So therefore you have the same issue with tax office and uh, private usage as before. Private usage is plotted, uh, it's not plotted the data, the data for the business use is plotted. Or there are other, there are other services done with the car. For example, fleet cars. If you are a technician and um, you have to drive to a customer uh, and you have no own car, you take a fleet car or out of a pool of cars. And if you are, for example, um, somebody of an airline who has to travel home, they have also fleet cars which can be used frequently. It's some mixture between a car sharing and a rental car from, from the... Then there are other stakeholders, car sharing and car rental. Um, Several years ago, um, uh, there was a message in a German newspaper about a car rental company uh, in US, which uh, asked for special payments. The asked the driver for special payments because he was too fast, because he has signed a document that he has to keep the speed limits. And in Germany, there was some news about this in the newspapers. Um, car sharing. Um, if you are, have a car to go and so on, the cars has to be picked up at the end and to be transported uh, to a place where it could be rented again or where you can find it. So the car will give the information about the place 
where the car is at the moment and also the level of the fuel in the, uh, in the car. Then we have the assistance systems brand garage. I will take this, these points later on. But we also have the police. Um, for example, you have an accident. Um, will your car be a witness against you and saying the police and your counterpart in the accident maybe that you were too fast? Huh? Do you have a chance to say, no, I'm not accepting that my car gives the data to the police? Or if we think about the e-call, uh, which data are sent to, uh, to the control center? Uh, okay, uh, it's clear that in the minimal sentence, data sentence, there are uh, positioning information and also a call will try to build up uh, to check whether there are people injured or whether it was only a very small accident or something else. But um, so the control center could be interested uh, to estimate the damage. Hospital could also be interested maybe by the sensors uh, of the um, um, uh, for the protection systems. They are knowing whether the seat, whether there's somebody on the seat or not. And then you have maybe an accident where you can see that the car uh, was is heavily broken and four places were seated. Then it's an information for the hospital, so they could be interested in. Last but not least, with the data the police is collecting, uh, the court, the lawyer, the, even the lawyer of the other of your partner in the accident could be interested in what was the real accident. We have um, um, the situation, or if you are talking about witness, you know, and even if you were in an accident, you know, five minutes later, you see the accident in a different way, as 10 hours later, as one week later, and so on. And it's not because um, you, are, um, you want to shift or to change the past, but it's because you remember in a different way. Therefore, people think that the data and the car are more correct than you are, and they trust more in the data of the car, whether it's true or not. So, then we have surveyors, um, which want to check when there was an accident, whether something was before, whether this damage is really the damage of this accident and not the accident before, and last but not least, the insurance company who has to adjust the claims of an accident, for example. On the other hand, um, um, insurance companies are also interested uh, not, uh, to, uh, not uh, th that accidents are not happening too often, and therefore uh, they, have, they are interested in that people are uh, driving in a way that they are not creating risks. So therefore, they are offering now uh, systems where you have to pay less if you drive in a, um, in a less risky way. You know, there is a stick you can put on a CAN bus. This is offered from, I think, uh, Generali. And, uh, uh, and your, the way of your driving is analyzed then and... Uh, if you uh, and the insurance uh, is then less. Okay, <laughs> then let's come to the next slide. Yeah, well, um, well, insurance companies are of course interested in this data, mileage for example, to evaluate uh, the price of your insurance. But other stakeholders, uh, we already mentioned uh, CEO Volkswagen, Mr. Winterkorn, and he uh, earlier this year said, um, we don't accept that the data of our customers trickle somewhere else. Uh, and he also said, this data belongs to us, as you already heard. So the VDA, the German Association of uh, Automobile Manufacturers, um, released some principles uh, a month ago, 
about how to deal with this uh, data. <laughs> they differentiate between uh, car-related uh, data, for example, mileage, which is important, of course, uh, for maintenance uh, reasons and uh, technical reasons. Uh, personal uh, data rela uh, related data, for example, as address, and um, which should be under the control of the driver. For example, the usage, um, 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 uh, the gas usage, for example. Um, and uh, the third is uh, assistance, uh, assistance and infotainment data, which must be erasable. Because, uh, well, who is interested in what music did you hear? The car manufacturers are not. So these are the principles and the differentiation uh, about the uh, three kinds of data which is collected in a car. Um, okay. Serious. So, and we were thinking there's one stakeholder saying the data are mine. Uh, the data is mine, and there are other stakeholders, as we have presented before. And we said, okay, let's have a, a try. Let's ask them what they think about whom belongs to whom belong the data. We have sent, we have requested 41 uh, companies and uh, stakeholders also associations, and when you see we got, after the second time we have asked, we got a feedback of 17, they have answered, okay, if I would ask you as private people, I have a feedback, let me say, of two, three, four uh, percent. This our organization, they have normally CRM systems and so on, therefore the feedback is not <laughs> really high. And when I'm looking on the answers at the end, we had seven answers where there was some content in it. Some answers were often the way that they said, for example, uh, an insurance company, uh, we are thinking about and we will communicate our ideas by our own. Uh, others are saying, oh, the questions are going too deep into our company policy and therefore uh, uh, we will not tell you something. This was a car rental company having been paid more than 50,000 euro in 2012 by plotting a high-value high car. So, and um, from other companies there were no answer often on an email. Not answering is also a statement, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and some were writing, this is under the discussion, we are not quite sure, and so on. There are only a few answering more precise. And from the few which were pre answering more precisely are the one, this is the assistant and automobile uh, associations. A um, little bit to show what is their business. If you drive with a car and the car is breaking down when you are driving somewhere, uh, you have an issue, a challenge. Huh? And um, normally, therefore, you are, mit, uh, you are a member of ADAC, uh, uh, AVM, AMV, or other road systems uh, uh, companies. And what uh, are these companies doing? They try to mobilize you, that you can travel again, the optimal solution that you, could, that you can drive again with your own car. So, what are they doing? They are doing small repairs on the road, or if this is not possible, they are transporting your car to the garage, or to a garage, and uh, sometimes if the... Uh, repair is uh, too, too, too big, uh, then they're offering you uh, a replacement vehicle. So, in the past it was easy, you could put on a new wheel, you could change some parts of the engine, but now you need something more. You need car-related data from the engine, uh, you need maybe some, uh, you need the mail functions uh, via the systems. You have to change something. You need data how to change uh, some parameters in the engine. And you have to have the right to access uh, this data and to change this data, data. And therefore, they are asking the 
car manufacturer for open interfaces explicitly. Yeah. If they are not getting these interfaces, then they are coming. They are say, okay, this is a Ford, this is a BMW, this is a Daimler, this is a VW. We have no access rights. We can offer you a replacement car, and we bring your car to uh, your car to the garage. And this is not a nice business. It's a little bit expensive. Therefore, the system and automobile association companies are asking for open enterprises interfaces. Sorry. Um, Maybe it's not so difficult or so worse because mo uh, mobility warranties from some car suppliers are managed by um, assistance company uh, together with car rental companies, but uh, sometimes it could be more heavy. It's not a business for eternal. This was one business type, and the other who has answered are the garages and car dealers. What is the business of a garage and car dealer? The business is to repair cars, to maintain cars, and to manage the warranties. Um, therefore, the activities are the same. And what do they need? They need car-related data, they need the mail functions, Uh, they need also some personal data, for example, whether you, uh, you, uh, your uh, warranty is still valid and so on, or your warranty is uh, covering the mileage and so on. Um, and they need also the access rights to change the data. So, and there are two groups of car dealer and garage. One are linked to the brands, and the others are not linked to the brands. And if they don't get an interoperable, standardized, secured, and open access platform, become the garages not related to the car manufacturers have a problem in doing their business. In the past, um, It was also not every time very easy. For example, I was, when I was young, I was driving a Renault, and the Renault, I had a problem with the brackets, and for the brackets, you need special um, uh, special parts to handle this. And for this special parts, there is an industry delivering all garage these parts. But this is quite a little bit different if you have, uh, if, uh, you have only electronic uh, special parts, let me say it in those words. Or for another example, if, you, uh, if there is no electricity in your car, you have to restart and the security uh, environments in your car. Uh, you need some data belonging to the key environment, which um, garage, can get key data of VW, of your Audi, or maybe of your Daimler. Is there every country in Europe or in the world of the same level to get those data? That's a question. Okay. So, after hearing that, are we facing a new dawn of data retention within the car? Um, we have to answer a couple of questions. Um, what data is stored? Car-related data, for example, mileage, malfunctions, speed, etc. Um, Personal-related data, location, times, and dates. And even more personal data, for example, your phone calls, if you connect your phone or have a built-in cell phone in the car. The address book, if you sync it with your uh, smartphone, for example. Um, the music titles you listen to. Have you ever entered? Uh, uh, have you ever rented a car, uh, a modern car, and just looked into the board computer? And okay, you know uh, from the navigation system which destinations um, the user uh, uh, before that uh, drove to. That's one thing. But most of the people use, uh, for example, in rental cars or in uh, car sharing cars, uh, the built-in phone sync their phone books, you see who they called, you see the addresses if you, um, um, if you uh, haven't erased the data afterwards. 
So, um, and who else has access to the data? For example, another user of your car, of a rental car? Unless you control the data, everyone has access, who has access to the car, to your car you used. Your garage has access to the data. Uh, the car manufacturer, the Open Automobile Association, if they help you. Uh, mobile devices and all apps in the, you carry around with you, and especially speci specific car apps. For example, Mini offers uh, a special app for iPhone, for example. They can uh, control all um, uh, the uh, data within the car and exchange and sync data. If you don't erase it on the car, who has else uh, access to that car and who has access to the data that is gathered by your smartphone? The app manufacturer, Google, Microsoft, Apple. And another interesting question is, where is the data stored? In the car, with unknown duration and structure? Um, and there is a tendency, because memory gets cheaper and cheaper, that and more services for better problem solving are coming to the market, that more and precise data uh, with a longer duration is stored within your car. The computer centers of your car manufacturer Car uh, store that car related data, service related data, person related data, and also here the tendency to use cloud services, always on services, and more services covering car life cycle. And <coughs> also the same here more and more precise data and longer duration of storage. Your garage will store car related data, service related data, and personal related data. And here the tendency but to use cloud services, always on services, and more services covering driver life cycle, driving life cycles, and more precise data and longer duration of the uh, storage of the data. And fourth, in the computer centers of uh, the companies like Google, Microsoft, Apple, by using your smartphone connected to your car, and here is the tendency uh, to have a big data relation, and that's even more worrying that uh, they collect these data, more precise data, and use that to relate those collected data. But nothing is without awareness, and you are showing me that the awareness is coming up. It's really important for us to discuss what is happening there and what has to be done also from the political point of view. Awareness is one point which is very important. It shows that the room is more than overcrowded, but there's a lot of awareness here in the room, but we have to get it outside. What we think is uh, even also very important is that all the interfaces your car uses are open uh, standards and open interfaces. So you are able to control which data is, um, well, get, get out of your car, and you also have access to the data yourself. You are in control of the interfaces and therefore they have to be open. So, and the other thing is we think it's a car is something like a part of your home and therefore all data should be encrypted starting in the car and you should have the key uh, of opening the data to somebody else or to keep it closed. Another important thing is transparency. You should know where the data is stored, what data is stored, how long it's stored, and who has access to it. And even more important is, you shouldn't gather this information, this transparency information from all diff different sources. There should be one single point of information where you can uh, look where what is happening to my data from my car. And last but not least, we need a uh data privacy declaration and simple speech that everybody who is able to drive a car is also able to understand what she or he is signing. Yeah, well, it's, well something we should have uh, in other places too. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Um, we hope you had fun and... Thank you very much. Before we take 10 minutes of Q&A, there, there is a small crowd management issue here. After the Q&A, 
may I kindly ask you to leave the room through this entrance down here, not up there, because other people are waiting already. So please leave through this door, not through this door. And Super. Uh, before starting. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. And the first ones to leave, please, are the people sitting in the aisles. And remember, we will have 10 minutes of Q&A, so those of you who are interested, just stay here and line up behind the microphones. No? Oh, But now we good. let wow. That's, uh, the people yeah. leave who perhaps need to go for the next this talk. Schon eine, schon eine lange Schlange, just a two-minute break. Yep. Mach doch mal den zweiten Türflügel auf, dass da richtig Platz ist. Ja. Thank, thank you very much for your patience. The people who are leaving now are on the way to the next talk. And we have 10 minutes of Q&A. Just give them two or three minutes. nicht nervös. <laughs> okay. Wird, wird, wird ein bisschen schwierig, weil die Leute an den Mikrofonen sozusagen, genau, aber äh, in, in 30 Sekunden wird es hoffentlich soweit sein, hier ist auch ein Mikrofon, da steht keiner, äh, ja ich weiß, geht ja auch schlecht, ähm, ich muss allerdings nach 10 Minuten. Ja, ähm, ich, wir, wir engeln uns das schon hin, aber es hat ja keinen Sinn, hier jetzt Stress zu machen.
Should should we start with some questions from could, the internet while people leaving the room? Uh, could the door angels please tell the people waiting outside that we will be having maximum ten minutes of Q and A and then the entrance starts? I know, I know, I know. The schedule is a little bit flexible. It is. And uh, may I ask the people lining up for Q&A, uh, ask short questions and, and expect short answers. We have only a maximum, an absolute maximum of 10 minutes, okay? Okay, let's start. Question one. Okay. Micro. Is it on? Is it turned on? Okay. Yeah. I've got uh, two quite brief questions. First one is... Speak up loud and eat the microphone. <laughs> eat the microphone, okay. <laughs> Uh, the first one is, um, as far as I know, the whole functionality of OBD2 is only available via wired um, connection. How um, good is the functionality of uh, um, Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connection? And secondly, um, how easy or is it possible with standard OBD um, diagnosed tools for a service technician to manipulate these data in the car? Thank you. Mm. Okay, the, the interface for OBD2 can be wired, can be wireless, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Um, of course, service technicians must be able to alter the data in the car, for example, to erase error codes after having, um, um, well, uh, uh, well uh, repaired the car. So, of course, you have to uh, be able to alter the data. And, of course, you might have heard about that, that um, roundabout. 30% um, of all used cars sold in Europe um, have not the exact mileage they had, well, they really have. So, of course, there are means to uh, alter the data. Okay. Question two. Okay. Yeah. Question okay. two. Uh, there's, uh, on, uh, for example, electric cars and Nissan Leaf, uh, they do ask you whether you want to send uh, data to uh, uh, Nissan. Uh, however, uh, if you don't accept it, it will, will not uh, uh, use the navigator. Uh, I think it still sends a point of uh, uh, where you where you are parking the car because the Nissan system is sending email if you haven't plugged the car in. Uh, the other thing is that uh, many Nissan Leaf owners have uh, are using a Bluetooth based uh, uh, audio reader uh, mostly because they are using an application called called uh, Leaf Spy, which is uh, logging all the data uh, locations and whatever. So a pretty good idea that you can get just about anything uh, out of those cars which have uh, this Bluetooth TV, uh, ODP reader plugged in uh, when, uh, when, when the owner leaves, leaves the car parked. <laughs> yeah. What's, What's that? What was the question? <laughs> yeah. uh, I just uh, <laughs> curious. curious. Yes. Uh, I'm just curious. Have you uh, looked at the Nissan Leaf on uh, all yeah. these newer cars yeah. because they they actually are. Quite uh, verbose, uh, especially the Tesla. Tesla, I think that's uh, yeah. very open. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. Can, can we have the next and last question? Other guys, they lined up earlier. So I know. Uh, one more, and and then we have to stop. Sorry, in order not to completely sabotage our schedule. Okay. Short then, short question. Uh, with then, regard to the organization load, is there any kind of uh, collaboration with uh, automotive makers, OEMs, uh, sub -sub suppliers, and so on? If we are connected with any cars manufacturers in any way, no, we're not. We're a political uh, organization, NGO. Is not there an interest, or not even that? No, there is an interest making uh, liberal internet politics. That's yeah. the motivation we have. Yeah. Okay. okay, thank, thank you. you very, very much.